Hi guys, it's Mina. Welcome back. <laughs> Zed and I are here too. What are you doing, silly? Okay, anyway. Welcome back. <laughs> Today we're going to be pouring on a 24 by 36 gallery wrapped canvas from Artist Loft. I have taped the back and put my push pins in. And we have a ladybug visiting us. Hello, sweetheart. Come here. Let's get you away from the paint, okay? Come on. We'll find you some nice aphids. Here you go. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Okay. All right. Now that all the animals have been dealt with, <laughs> let me show you my colors. I have some really beautiful Arteza colors today and we've mixed some of them with some of the Art Alchemy ones, which is very exciting. So my first one from Arteza, this is their Pearl Marmalade, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous, coppery, lovely copper obsession color. So it's just fantastic. I used this one in Prismatic. It was so cool. I'll link that one for you up here. It was one of the really cool comb wrecked ring pours. So that's the Pearl Marmalade. I also have Arteza's Pistachio, Pearl Pistachio Green, which is rapidly becoming one of my favorite colors. I just, this stuff is like magical. It, it's, it's created this beautiful glowing effect in two or three pieces that I've done in Reflections, and then we used it in uh, Bon Temps. It was beautiful, it was a great color. And to this one, I have added some Art Alchemy Fairy Wings. So a note on that, the Art Alchemy paints, they're beautiful colors. They're, you know, small bottles though, 1.7 ounces and it's kind of thin. So instead of trying to make this into a 16 ounce cup of paint, I've determined that I enjoy mixing up regular paint and then adding this to that. So that's what I've done in this, this series of colors is add some al Art Alchemy paints to my already mixed up Arteza colors. So we used the Fairy Wings also in Dragon Skin and then we also used it in Blooming as well. So very, very cool stuff. Okay, so the next one we have, that's the pearl pistachio green. This is Arteza's deep green, which is really, really pretty. It's got a little bit of a blue shade to it though. So it's kind of like a very dark teal, which is cool. So my paint's all mixed with Liquitex gloss medium and varnish and the paint and the pouring medium. And Arteza is beautiful stuff. It's really cool. And I've realized that they're recreating a lot of the Golden's colors like the Prussian blue and so, and it's great paint, so go for it, Arteza. So if you're having challenges finding Goldens or using Goldens because of the price, Arteza is a great alternative because you can get a lot of the same colors, the iridescent copper, the Prussian blue, now they've got a Prussian green. This one's the Prussian blue. And to this, I have added the Midnight Sky in Art Alchemy, hold it there. All right, so that's the Prussian blue from Arteza. Then I have here their Prussian green, which I'm very excited about using. I haven't used this one before, but I've seen Sarah Mack use it and it's delicious. So. <laughs> and to this Prussian green, I have added their Art Alchemy Dark Forest, which is a beautiful metallic dark sparkly green. So that's very cool. Then next we have Arteza's Van Dyke Brown which is also one of my favorite Golden's colors. Now, a lot of people get freaked out about brown, but brown is an incredible color because it adds a lot of depth and it adds a lot of shadow. And if you use it correctly, then it doesn't take over the entire pore. It's just shadowing or creating layers and creating depth in your painting. And sometimes you don't even realize it's there. So Van Dyke Brown is a beautiful color. Okay, and last but not least, we have Arteza's Gold. And to this one, I have added, what is this? What's it called? Ancient Coin. Art Alchemy and Ancient Coin. And that's a very pretty gold, sparkly. So we have the four Artezas, Fairy Wings, Ancient Coin, Dark Forest, and Midnight Sky. That one's so pretty. Okay. My sister-in-law was over the other day and she was opening it up and she was like, wow. <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> okay. All right, so we have the Art Alchemy, we have our gold. So just one more time, so I didn't miss anything. Pearl Pistachio, Pearl Marmalade, Deep Green, 
gold, Prussian green, Van Dyke brown, and Prussian blue. And then this is Artist Loft Flow Acrylic in Black that I might use as a flow extender if I need it. Okay, so this is a 24 by 36 inch gallery wrapped canvas from Artist Loft. And to figure out how much paint you need for this size, you multiply length times width and then divide by 28. So 24 by 36, 24 times 36 is 864. And then when you divide that by 28, you get 30.56. So roughly 31 ounces of paint is needed to cover this size canvas. So let's layer a cup with some pretty things. What do we want to do in the middle? Okay, I think I want to put a little bit of the pearl marmalade in the center. Just a small amount. And then I'm going to put some gold in the center. I'm not even really sure what kind of pour I want to do. If I want to do a wandering straight pour or a, you know, just a straight pour in one spot. So we'll figure that out. Okay, so now we have our copper and we have our gold. And now I'm going to add, hmm, let me see. Okay, let's go with some of the Prussian green. And then I'm going to put a layer of the pistachio. So what I'm doing is I'm using these lighter colors, the pearl marmalade, the pistachio, and the gold in between these layers of the darker colors. Okay? So you want contrast when you're layering your cup. You want there to be contrast between the colors. So after that pistachio, okay, let's go in with the deep green. And now I'm going to put some more of the copper in there. The pearl marmalade, sorry. And now we're going to come in. Actually, I'm going to put a tiny bit of brown right now. And then we're going to put some gold. I'm just filling it down the side for some reason. Sorry. Okay, now I'm going to come in with some of the Prussian blue. Kind of a thicker layer. We're going to come back to the pistachio. And let's go back to the Prussian green. We'll go back to the pearl marmalade now. A little bit of brown again. Not a lot. So you just a little bit and it creates a beautiful contrast against that co that copper which is really really pretty okay we're gonna do some of the deep green now and some gold and another layer of the Prussian blue okay so we're gonna stop there for a minute okay Way a little bit. Ponytail blowing all over the damn place. <laughs> Alright, so what do we want to do? Do we want to do a straight pour? Do we want to do a wandering straight pour? Do we want to do a ring pour? I don't want to do a ring pour. I think we want to do a wandering straight pour. So, okay, I'm going to pour just a little bit of paint like in a line down this way. Pour a cup into that. Are you ready, husband of awesomeness? <laughs> Here we go. Hello, Gail. Don't blow my paint, please. That's pretty cool. I like it. Okay, so let me see. We're gonna need probably 10 more ounces at least. So I'm gonna layer that first in here before I start using colors as a base coat. There's some lovely copper in there. I'm just gonna add a smidge more. And some of the Prussian blue. See, we can look at this. And see what do we like 
this is really neat that's where the gold and the deep green and the brown and the um, Prussian green were that's really cool this is the copper and that deep green this I'm not so crazy about but it's still gonna be really neat when it opens up but I really love that Prussian blue with the green and with the gold so this is like your road map if you need another cup you can see what you've done and decide what you like and what you don't like so we got our Prussian blue in there let's go back in oh, I'm gonna put some pistachio in first then some deep green and a little bit of brown a little bit of gold And so the Prussian green again. I think we're going to end this one with a little bit more of the pearl marmalade. Okay. Go away, fly. Shoe fly. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a little bit of the Prussian blue along here. And then we're going to pour this one right next to that. So the faster you go as you move, the more of a straight line you get. And then if you stay in one place for a while, you get all sorts of interesting effects. Okay, that's cool. Pretty cool. All right, so I think I want to thin out the Prussian blue and use that on, as a flow extender on that side to go around it a little bit. Help our paint move and slide easily. You want the flow extender is just your regular paint, just thinned out with a little bit of water to help your paint glide and move easily. Because if I didn't put this in and I tried to tilt that bottom part right there, what would happen is the paint would roll over itself and I would lose all of this cool copper. So by doing this, we are allowing our paint to slide around on something. Okay. So. Spread out those on the corners first, just a little bit. Not a lot of paint on there. I'm definitely going to need to put some more flow extender on that, on those corners. Spread it out a little bit. I think we're going to put some of our pistachio on there too. It's really pretty. <laughs> I really like that actually. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's tilt this and see what happens. So there seems to be more paint on this side, so I kind of want to go off that way to distribute it evenly. that corner. It's a cool bubble. Did you see that? <laughs> okay, since the paint is over here, I'm going to take it and cover this edge real Ooh. Sorry. We're going to cover that corner up down there because the chances of me getting the paint to go all the way back over there again if I bring it this side are not so good. So Let's use the weight of the paint where it is. Cover that up. A 
let this float down a little bit. We're gonna go down this way again and we're gonna go off that last corner. You see the flow extender is going off first. That's perfect. So that's allowing us to keep what we poured instead of losing it all. so crazy about this color in here so we might lose some of that that's fine I'm really liking the swirl thing on the copper in the blue just let that stretch So as we're stretching this paint out, it's getting thinner here on the edges and it's also going to allow cells to pop up. And so up here on this edge, remember we put down a, li a line of gold first. So there's gold underneath there. So if we do get cells over here, there's a good chance they will be gold cells. I love this copper on the corner. That's awesome. What do we like and what do we not like? I don't know if I like this half as much. I like this half. Let's pour a little bit more on this side and cover that up. I'm probably going to do more Prussian blue and the... I'm going to just pour what's in here out. Oh no, I'm out of the Prussian blue. Shucks, I used it all. Okay, you know, I'm just going to use a different cup. Put some of our dark green in there, pistachio. I'm going to go in with some of the Prussian green and the gold. I'm going to go back to the dark green and we're going to put some pearl marmalade in there. A little bit of gold one. Actually, from up high, I'm going to put it down so it goes underneath. There's that mildly dirty. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pour this along this edge and let it dry, glide down and cover up that stuff. I'm going to start off the edge of the canvas. Okay, this should actually be pretty cool. That's really neat. It looks like it's braided. Actually, you know, a little bit more paint left in here. So I'm gonna come this way and just cover up some of that blue a little bit. Okay. All right, you ready? Let's tilt it. We're gonna go straight down. and let that open up. Just a little bit. You can see that new paint is just pushing the old paint off. Pearl marmalade is so cool where you see the gold layered on top of it. I'm just letting it push that greenish blue part off the edge there, off that last corner, and stretch out this top part. And notice how the paint on this side is not moving because it's already stretched, it's anchored in place. there. Keep that Prussian blue on the corner. It's 
take this back down towards the center a little bit and let it stretch out on this side and open up over here a bit. Okay, let's look at it for a second. I like this sort of, it's like a bird in the middle there. <laughs> You see him? Like in space feathers, that bird that's, eh, that's cool. Let's just see a hound dog. A hound dog? You're weird. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can't get some more of that interesting green off that corner. And the gold is just gonna roll right over that and push it off. Gail's trying to move my canvas. <laughs> okay. And right there. Okay. That's really cool. Okay, so there's one thing I wanna show you guys that I screwed up. So after we poured the second cup, and I said I want to put a little bit more green in. Let me wipe my hands off so I don't screw it up even more. And in here, messy, and you see those drips. So, let's see, what should we do about that? We can take our stick and just draw a line through that area to sort of smooth it out more. and sort of incorporated into the design that's already there. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm just gonna turn it around one more time and we're gonna take some of the weight of the paint back down and really stretch out this top part. And then we're gonna torch it. See, the paint is not moving very much. So several times you guys have messaged me and said, you know, how do I know if I have too much paint on my canvas? You should theoretically be able to tilt it almost 90 degrees and have it not moving very much. That's how you know you're done when your paint has stopped moving around. So, I'll wipe my hands and then we're gonna to torch this. Well, honestly, in this heat, it's not a good idea to leave a lot of paint on your canvas. You don't wanna do that because that's inviting it to crack. So you don't wanna mix your paint super, super thick in the summer and you don't wanna leave a lot of paint on there. Okay, let's torch it. Okay, so there's only one area that I'm not really crazy about and that's right here where there's like some of the Prussian green with gold and then copper on top of it 
I can see the different layers, but I'm pretty sure you guys cannot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take what's left in my cup right there, and I'm gonna just start right off the edge of the canvas. And follow the line that's already there and add some more color and interest to sort of break up that interesting green. <laughs> See, let's put a tiny bit of copper in the cup. So what's in this cup? Here, we can use what's in this cup. Start right off the edge and then just There we go. Okay, that's cool. I like that better. Breaks it up a little bit so it's not so solid. But it's good to have areas that there's not a lot going on because when, especially when there's very busy parts, you want to have someplace solid for your eye to rest and to be able to sort of really appreciate. Like I love this contrast between that pearl marmalade and the dark green right there. This is really cool. This is pretty. I love this part. So we'll see what happens when this dries, but it should be really, really cool. I love this, because this is like, there's gold or blue underneath, and then there's a layer of gold, and then there's a layer of copper. We're getting these cool lines in here too. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> so that's it for this one. I'll show you guys when it's dry. See you a bit. Okie dokie. So this is a couple of days later. <laughs> you guys, this is so cool. Look at that pearl marmalade. Bling, bling. <laughs> Just beautiful. Especially with the 24 karat gold up in here. Love that. I love how they play together. I love how they look together. And look, there's a dragon. <laughs> I didn't even see it. <laughs> and then we put it down and HOA was like, look, do you see the dragon? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> apparently there was a hummingbird in there. There was a basset hound at some point. <laughs> but this one turned out very, very cool. So this one had the Prussian blue and the pearl marmalade and that Arteza deep green and our pistachio and the 24 karat gold. And we had used Van Dyke brown. Look at that copper, the pearl marmalade blinging thing. <laughs> so pretty. So you see here, there's the Van Dyke Brown. It's not very, very noticeable, but what it does do is really give the 24 karat gold something beautiful and dark to play off of. So that's showing up a lot more because it's against the dark background, which is pretty cool. So. Very pretty, I love how this one turned out. Oops, sorry. This is that section in the center that we sort of wrecked a little bit with the stick. Pretty cool. I love this though, This, these lines and these rings and how that Prussian blue and the deep green is so dark against it. Pretty cool, he's like got smoke coming out of his nostril or something. <laughs> I love this section though. This is what I was looking at from the other direction, which totally looked like feathers or wings. I guess it still does. Very cool. So I'm glad that the, the dark green and the gold that's down there at the bottom and on the right corner didn't get weird. It actually dried really cool. So that's good to know because I was a little worried about that interesting green. <laughs> This is really, really neat. Like a dragon flying into the sun. Very cool stuff. So this one is soaring. This is a 24 by 36. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We will see you soon. Have a great day.